All right, my good brother, Mr. Rowan Bass. There's a lot to learn about you. Yeah. It's a lot to learn about you, it's and I've been, I've been curious for a very long time. It's funny you say that. First lesson is Ron Bass. Ron Bass. Yeah, but see, a lot that, of people that, say bass. See, that, and I don't that, get mad, though. I see, mad. then we got to start this over because we are not going to have that type of flaw. Bass or bass? I, it's bass. Because of that, my clothing line that was in the market for about four years, I named it Bass by Ron Bass to confuse people even more. Bass by Ron Bass. No, it, see, was, this it is. was more so to, um, I wanted to, it was like bass, which is, you know, connected to sound. And I wanted to give something that people could feel mm. here, so that was what I wanted the clothing line to be. But yeah, it's Ron Bass, um, but you know, people sometimes say Ron Bass. I'm just like, unless I feel the need to- You started that already? The clothing line? Oh, it was in the market from 2014 to, I mean, 2014 to 2017. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's crazy. So, so how many times do you get people <laughs> they be like bass 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 all bass. the time Different. all the time yeah, right all the time so bass yeah bass. like the fish gotcha. bass is like the sound gotcha. but yeah i don't, I don't what's trip what's the what's the that's your name name yeah my family name yeah oh shit. i mean okay. i can't claim ownership ownership to it. i mean you know we mm -hmm. probably inherit that name not probably but it's not our yeah. true inheritance name but yeah that's my american name you know what I'm saying? you know what i mean you know where i'm going with that yeah <laughs> So, like, I met you in Jamaica. Which was random and which was more really was random. about you than it is about, like, I I was processing, no, I'm like, man, I think that I'm pretty, you know, spontaneously outgoing, adventurous to a certain, that what fits me. But just that whole thing, like, I was actually telling a friend how we met the other day. And I was like, I remember being in the um, living room or kitchen or something, and they're like, Etienne, you have a friend. He's like a friend. Right? Like he kind of knew everybody that would be coming around, mm. and he really didn't know that you were gonna come because he yeah. said, I, "I just, I just texted my address like a day or two ago. I didn't think he was really coming." <laughs> and how, how you got there and the driving and all, I was just like, "Wow, impressive." Yeah, that was the first time I ever drove in the city on the other side of the street, mm. and that was pretty. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, you know. <laughs> right, right. I've, I've never done it in a car, but in Bali, I was on a moped. For th two weeks doing it so just learning how to be on the other side but i can imagine a car is probably different to stare because in the yeah. bike is just you're turning awkward but it's i mean it feels awkward but i can only imagine in a yeah. car it would be because we're not used to driving like that it was it was like it was a crazy decision because i felt like i was on the longest highway going from kingston to um no coming from um where where we, we were in Kingston, weren't you in Montego Bay? Yeah, I was in Montego yeah. Bay going to Kingston, and that was the longest, beautiful highway. Mm -hmm. But the whole time, I'm like, yo, I'm, I want to enjoy where I'm at, but you know, <laughs> you know it's crazy. <laughs> so I think it's really interesting, man, that you took your art all around the world. Mm. And I just got to ask, how? How yeah. did you take your art around the world? And you have fun doing it. Yeah, and and not to like be cliche or make things more than what it is, but in actuality, I didn't take art around the world. Art took me mm. because it was a surrendering. You know, art stemmed from, um, I lost both my parents at 19. Well, my mom at 19, my dad at 22. And, um, you know, I was just in a space for quite some time. And when I went back to like, I was like, all right, I, I gotta live again. I got to, like, I, I choose this. So I remember, like, as a kid, just enjoying art, being my most freest thing, and it found me. And it was like almost like a conversation, like, I got you. Just as long as you be present and pour out into me, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm do all that I can. It was like, became my best friend. And I didn't have to, like, explain myself. I wasn't judged by it. It was just present, be present, and work, you know, just do what feels natural to you. So I was able to, like, paint or, say the things that I couldn't say verbally in an art piece. And it didn't even have to look like, I didn't have to literally say, I'm broken, mm. I'm dying inside, I'm hurt. I didn't have to like say that. The painting didn't look morbid or anything. It was like, I started giving meaning and definition to shapes and things like that. So it just worked for me. And like I said, once I made that commitment to art, I think it then you know took me in and it, and it took me around the world. Cause art is, yeah. was, was present before I was, you know, I'm a product of art. You know, when two people come together, a product, that's art, you know? What what age did you start? Um, I mean, since I was a kid, art has always been around me. I uh, was always intrigued by it. My family, my mom and dad both pushed me, like, to 
have art as an outlet. Like, you know, it was always, here's some coloring books, put the game down or come inside, let's do it. And I wasn't never mad at it. It's like, oh, cool, more things to do. I loved like markers and just arts and craft stuff. And they kept feeding that. So it was like, when I decided, it wasn't, my intentions wasn't like, let me sell art, let me know the business of it. It was just literally, I'm hurting and this is therapy. You know what I mean? I could just get lost in this. It was the only thing that I found purpose in. Because honestly, I was just living to exist. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I before, really, before. This is after my parents passed, like 19. I was living to exist. So, okay. like I said, I guess it started, the, the fuel or the, the foundation started when I was a kid. But I didn't really get into it until I was about, like, maybe 24, 25. Mm. Um, I can't remember the age exactly, but I remember I got into a car accident, which was... Like I, my first like near death experience, like it was. If you look at it from you know the the imagery or whatever you want, we'd probably say it was fatal. Mm-hmm. You know this would be fatal. But when I was able to walk away from that, um, I felt like I had a second chance, and I was like, all right, what are you gonna do with that? And I was like, well, I feel like I, I want to take my parents' legacy. And just to be clear, mm-hmm. you, 19, your parents. My mom, yeah, and then 22, three years later. And then three years later, so your mom, then your dad, Mm -hmm. then, well, before, like, even before then, how was, where you from? Brooklyn. You was in Brooklyn all the time? Mm Mm-hmm. Brooklyn until, well, that, the year my mom passed, my first year in college, I went away, I went away to um, Edinburgh Edinburgh University, which is in Pennsylvania, Um, and that was, like, my first time out, like, really out, like, you know, Mm -hmm. we did little family trips. Yeah, because people in New York don't leave. Yeah. Which is funny, growing up, <laughs> bumping heads with my friends, because leaving to me was going to Manhattan mm. at a younger age, like when I had the permission to get on the train. And my friends were like, yeah, what are you going to Manhattan for? Like, mm. So I was always had an adventurous spirit, wanting to see what's out there, like outside of my own environment or whatever. Like I just wanted to explore and see and come back and tell, but they just wasn't receptive to it. You know what I mean? So 19 was when I left to go to college, and that was my first year. She had gotten sick towards the end of the school year. and right before that summer. So March. she was sick for a very- uh, No, two uh, months. Everything two, happened. Two months? Everything happened so fast. Uh, so everything was fine before that two months? life mo- was fine. I was like, <laughs> I had nothing, you know what I mean? Like really didn't go through much, had a beautiful mm. life. You know, still life is beautiful. Um, but yeah, I didn't really experience any like, let me not say any trauma, cause there definitely was some childhood trauma in some other instances, but for the most part, I had my parents. I had, you know, they were. Yeah. That was my, I had my family. So you got, so that happened. Then your dad. Yeah, which was like, all right, f everything, because you like the mom was tough, but it was like, and my dad was interesting. He had got diagnosed first, so he had cancer three years before my mom even got sick. So I went through that phase, but when we realized, right, he's gonna be okay. This is something we just gotta live with. He's gonna be fine. Um, I was cool with that. I still had my mom, but whatever. So when she was left, I was like, all right, let me lean on my pops. So I had him for three years mm. when she was gone. And then when he left, I was just like, I'm ready to go. Like, And it was funny, like, not funny, sorry. It was interesting as that I don't have it in me to harm myself in a way where I'm like suicidal and like that. I, would never, yeah. I don't think I would ever get that low. Yeah. But I definitely lived on a, the lowest frequency possible where I would put myself in danger where like, it's weird how the mind works. It's like, I'm not committing suicide, mm. but life has no purpose because my loved ones are gone. So mm. I'm just living carefree, right. living on right. the edge. But I, but to me, it's like a coward almost way. Like you're not really admitting to yourself that this is almost like suicide yeah, because yeah, you're yeah, not yeah, inflicting, yeah, yeah. but you're like, you almost walked out on purpose in front of that car, yeah, but yeah. you're not telling, like, you know, it's weird. You're trying to just, you're trying to tell yourself a story right, and believe certain things, but what it looks like yeah. on the outside is like, yo, you're you're about to step off that ledge. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I was young, man, and didn't really, while there were so many people that I know were there for me, I just, you know, no one really, and it's interesting, my mom prepared us, me and my brother, he's eight years older than me. She basically prepared us for her not being around as far as like what to do, clean up after yourself, the responsibilities. But I don't think anyone could prepare you for the grief right, 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 or the right. emotional baggage or things that comes with losing a parent or a loved one. Yeah. I don't think no one they can prepare you for their absence and like, look, if I go, you must do this. But a lot of that isn't you must be strong or get therapy or it's going to be rough days, going to feel like, but I'm always here. Like, mm. that's not really the, the lessons, which rightfully so. No yeah. one really knows how, you know what I mean? Life is fragile, but life is also beautiful. 
So yeah, man. Um, that's we, pretty interesting, man. Cause like you, you, I talk about this having uh, how powerful it is to have ideas, mm -hmm. you know, and have dreams and aspirations, and but the idea is like a seed, you mm -hmm. know, and when you plant that thing, you got you either give it good energy, bad energy, or no energy, you know, mm -hmm. but for you. It wasn't like you gave it no energy. You still gave it in, like you still gave life energy. Mm -hmm. It just had to figure you out right. a little bit. Is mm -hmm. that is that's, that? That's pretty accurate. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So now, <laughs> how? Like how? Where did this start? Like where yeah. did the stroke? Where's the first stroke at? Like where? How did this? <clears throat> the first stroke. Um, I mean, there were moments where like I dipped and dabbled with it. Um, again, just for more so like therapy. It was no structure behind it and i remember as you know just going back to the classes and thing that i um taken in, in school because mm -hmm. um, i went to school for digital photography was my major so i took some courses in like art history and graphic design and i remember stumbling upon jean michelle basquiat's work um you know and found some similarities as far as like here's an individual who some might say troubled soul, but just feeling mm. and being able to put his feelings out no matter what. And it didn't look like what I thought art had to look like. Like some people might say like, paint a picture, art is like painting a portrait of you and everything is precise and perfect mm -hmm. or whatever. But it's like, maybe that is to majority of people, but what about those individuals that want to put the eyes down here mm. or put the lips up here or ex expand the lips or not put lips at all or just the, or the whole body, but nothing about the head or whatever, or do the head and just blank it, like li not adding limitations. And to me, it was like, wow, like this guy is literally free. Although he has, as you can tell through his work, that there's some struggles and battles, things that some he's overcoming, some he hasn't through his work, but there's a certain freedom to it. So it's like watching his work and seeing the similarities to like the work I did as a child and just what I feel inclined to do, it actually pushed me more just to be free. Mm. Don't have like a, don't always have to have like a, a plan. And I apply that to life as well. Like, you know, for me for a long time and still to this day, there really isn't, if, there, if I had to say it was a plan, it's only plan A because I feel like the minute you even think of a plan B, you're telling plan A, there's a possibility you won't work. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like a backup and it's right. like, you know, like if you think of sports, how many, how many times does the backup actually get to shine? It's only when, you know, if and if the plan A, who's the lead or whatever, gets hurt or not showing up, it's like, mm -hmm. then you step up. So what do you say to everybody who just, you know, got the major and got the sub-major, <laughs> you know, I mean, they every, got the, you know. Yeah, everybody has their path, man. Like, I don't, you know, take it away from them. And, I, you know, it's funny you like me ask that. I remember years ago, there was a young lady who told me she don't respect me. She's, and I was like, oh, you know, you're, you're painful. Like, just curious to know why. She's like, I went to school, I got this, this, and that, and here you are, just coming, mm. and I feel away. Mm. And I'm like, well, you know, where's the blueprint that says that, I mean, I know society made you feel, but I went to school as well. Maybe it wasn't, it didn't look like yours, or, you know, the degrees and stuff that you went, but yeah. I, I mean, I'm educated, I went to school. Um, I'm not gonna apologize for, you know, it not but being. You're not gonna apologize for being <laughs> dope, like, you know, and or, getting blessed. Right, and, like, and, I mean, <laughs> to each his own, like, that's your path, I don't yeah. know you know, what in your path or what in your, you know, lineage is either the lessons that's, Hating. I don't say stopping you, but Hating. I mean, yeah, <laughs> hey, it was what it was, but you know, I, I just thought it was interesting. But what I would have to say, I really don't have much. I mean, literally, I think we all can be tangible examples of what it could be. Not everyone mm. has the same story. There's like even musicians that go to school and they get like, you know, um, trained by the best schools in the mm -hmm. world and go to junior yeah, yards, yeah, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. And then now these days you could be, take a viral video of a dancer right. who's been dancing in the neighborhood and then, you know, a star says, I want him. And his whole we career was just talking about, um, takes off. We was just talking about um, this show that's on stars. And this show, when they was going through the casting process, they had lines wrapped around a building like like so many actors and actresses came coming out to to you know to try to get the audition to try to book the job. I mean thousands in different cities all the major cities and then when you look at the then when you look at the film when it comes out it's everybody you know <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say like like what was the point of even doing this yeah. you get what I'm trying to say like all these fine people you know 
probably went to school, mm-hmm. probably, you know, tried their whole life to figure this thing out. Yeah. And a couple people from around the way take a little video and they get it. Yeah. Do you feel like, to that, to that thought, do you feel like that's the way that it should be done? Or do you feel like you should go get education? I honestly feel like what feels natural to you. Some people need that or they inspire to that. They want to, in a craft, they want to not only be invested, but if out there it says, hey, these are the requirements to get to this point, some people want to stick to that. So I applaud those, but I also applaud the person that says, I'm going to go to the library and get all of this, mm-hmm. or I'm going to network my way in this industry and get jobs and experiences so you, through that you way. no school. No school. I went to school, yeah. I, no I got school. a degree. I went to Edinburgh University. I went to Briarcliff College. So I got a degree. It's okay. just that it wasn't focused on, like, fine art or anything of that nature. But, like, I'm, you know, I... I Do you believe it helps you out a little bit? or? I think it more so life skills. I don't think... I think, for me, after high school, as far as the education of, like, you know, school knowledge, arithmetic, reading, I think you learn mm. that in the 12 years. I think... I'm not saying college teaches you nothing academically, but for me, it was more so life lessons. Being around people from all walks of life, because you like, I leave my environment of Brooklyn, I go, and then some of those friends, I'm best friends with to this day, and that's mm. over 15. Yeah, you know, I was gonna say networking. Is it 20 years? No, not 20, but over 15 years or whatever. So it's like seeing people's nuances and their ways and behaviors, and you start to attach that to like, oh, this mm. group of people that live yeah. here, they wear this or say this. You just become, so that was more life lessons, because then now when you're out there in the real world, and you may be in a boardroom or a meeting, you're able to still be you, but you can identify the room, like, right, okay, right, this right, individual, right, right. understand opinions, and so it helped me with life lessons, but I can't say there was anything in there that academically was like, oh, you know what I mean? I mean, to some degree, yes, like I learned Photoshop, but could I could have done could, that on my own, own based yeah. on the foundation of what I learned through 1 to 12 as far as like how to read, how to, you know, follow programs. And, you know, that's why they teach you that stuff. Like right, when right, you right. first learn how to, you know, uh, do a pre, um, word or PowerPoint, like you got to go through it. So it's like you can take those same steps and open up Illustrator and learn, teach yourself or or whatever. So it wasn't like they basically introduce any new learning, you know, learning methods that I yeah. didn't know. So, so what, what school was this? Uh, my first one was Edinburgh University, and then the second was Briarcliff College out in Long Island. Wow. So you graduated both? Bri- I graduated Briarcliff. Edinburgh, I left early because my mom passed, and then I tried to go back, but I was still in like, that space or whatever. Mm. I took a semester off, and then I, like, went to Briarcliff and didn't, like, take a summer off. I just went straight through and graduated, and then gratefully... I kind of did that in the back of my mind because my dad had, had gotten sick, mm-hmm. and um, he had told me that one of his life goals was to see me graduate. Had I not went to school each of those summers, he wouldn't have been able to see me. So the wow. fact that I, I'm not even knowing, like it wasn't like I got to do this because of that, but I right. also wanted to finish. But in doing that, he was able to come to my graduation, and then months later he passed away. So like months, yeah, yeah, was, months after the graduation. Yeah, it was interesting. Actually, you know, not to get long winded, it was an interesting story. He he had actually before the graduation, maybe two weeks before my actual graduation, he had a stroke. And um, I was uh, me and some other friends that were graduating were gonna yeah. have a party. So the night before that party, the day before the party, they told me that my dad had a stroke, and I was like, well, I'm gonna come or whatever. My party was the next day, and I told my friends like, look, I can't make it. And a lot of people were coming to celebrate. So I went to North Carolina, and basically he had uh, been, um, he had a stroke in the shower, and he had been in there for a few days. And he, the, he, the way he told the story is that he could hear people knocking, but he couldn't move. He was just like, you know, your body shuts down on one oh. side. And um, finally they kicked the door in, they found him or whatever, and the good thing they found him when he did, but, you know, he was in there, and I would say he was in there for about two weeks. I'm calling him, leading up to my graduation, you know, every day, check on him. The morning of my graduation, um, you know, I'm living in Brooklyn, and uh, my doorbell rings. My, you know, I live in a building, so I'm like, "Who?" And somebody says, very low. They're like, "It's your dad." I'm thinking one of the kids in the building playing with, it, so I don't pay it no mind. The bell rings again. I'm like, "Who is it?" I'm trying to get ready for the graduation. Literally the morning of, like, it's your dad. Open up. So now I'm like, "All right, who the hell is playing?" Because I'm already upset that my dad is sick, and now you want to play funny. So now I feel like the old me, now I gotta F somebody up. Mm. Morning of my graduation, playing around. So I run downstairs with like Vin, just like, I'm like, you know. And lo and behold, my dad is like, there was a step. So he's sitting on a step, like out of breath. It's like a scene out of a movie, bro. 
can't make this up. And I'm like, my mind is like, what's happening? I know that's not my dad. Like, how is that my dad? I spoke to him in the hospital two days ago or something. So I'm like, dad, what are you doing? Like, what? And I'm like, he's like, I couldn't miss this for the world. Like in this very sickly voice. So I'm just trying mm. to press him. I'm like, well, come upstairs. I'm thinking this ain't, something's not right. Maybe a friend or something bought him. So he told me that he had a friend come meet him. He was in North Carolina, a friend come visit him. And his friend was in on it. And he basically took his friend car from the hospital and drove to New York to see mm. his son graduate. Wow. And wasn't he supposed to? Right. We go to graduation. If anyone has a video, and I don't know if they do, but I guarantee you if you play that video, you will hear someone constantly coughing. All throughout the graduate, my dad is like sick. Mm. He's literally, I mean, guess he's dying. He's sick. You hear coughing, coughing. People bring him water. I'm starting to feel away like, damn, like, I don't really know just because he wasn't saying much. So graduation, fucking he's there. I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also like thinking about my dad. My, I had two tickets. My aunt that morning, I had to call her and was like, hey, this is weird, but my dad is here. She's like, your dad? Everybody's like, what you mean? He just, you know, and I'm like, I don't know. She's like, no, don't worry. Like, I'll meet y'all after mm. to go eat. Let him be present, you know? So we go out to eat or whatever, and then we go back to my house. I'm like, well, come and see and get some rest. And he's like, nah, people probably worry. He said, I got to get back. And I'm like, dude, you act like get back is like 20 minutes. This is a 10-hour drive. What are you talking? Like, nah. He's like, listen, I'm good. Like, I'll be all right. And I didn't know what he meant by this, but he said to me, he's like, my life's complete. I've seen everything I need to see. Mm. And I guess my, my concern was more so his well-being, like, no, I'm fighting when, like, come rest. I didn't even, like, but realize what he's saying. he just wanted to see his saying. son graduate. Right. And, like, and, everything um, he's seen you go through, he... Right. So, like I said, shortly, you know, um, a few months or so, yeah, he, he passed and... Yeah, man. I, I could say, I could say as a father, like, I... I I can see that. I can see how you had you at least want to mm -hmm. see from from this point to this point, and if and if so, it's like man, yeah, I did I did my job. Yeah, I also think too, probably was a bit, a bit of him living through me. You know, growing up in the South, didn't probably have the the resources to probably go to school. So like even certain things that he pushed me in. I remember yeah. like when he put music in front of me. It wasn't like he was uh, strict, but I saw his passion in a way when days where I'm like, I don't want to, I don't really care. Mm. I saw like him come what through in a way. What did you the music? Like um, just play instruments. Like I played the keyboard, the bells, the drums. Like he was mm. a, a, you know, a musician as well. And just putting me out there. Like at one point I was in a choir singing at school. So just performing arts because I think that was part of his dream and he wanted to like relive it. And not where it was like forced how some parents might like put it on you it was like they introduced me and I found some liking to it but I also was a very adventurous kid like I could be doing this and I'm like wait but what's that over there now I want to I'll you come back to that. this but I want to yeah, yeah. they never stopped me but you know I think part of that my dad with him wanting to see me do certain things he's when it was basketball he came in like a lot of games and would give me the things that he his knowledge on it or whatever so it was part of it too was like hey I, he probably was robbed of those experiences so now I get to see my son so it's like part of like a mirror image mm. kind of thing um, so I think it was like the last thing was like just graduating and, you know, he got his, he got his wish, you know? So, uh, so being as though you got an inquisitive mind and you mm -hmm. like, you know, you kind of all over the place, not, not for you cause mm -hmm. you know where you're going, but mm -hmm. you know how a lot of people not be like, time. Not no, all the time. so not everybody all that time. wanders not lost basically, <laughs> <laughs> <Good> <laughs> you know, you know how people try to make you feel like mm -hmm. you even not doing enough or you're doing too much or like. How did you find a happy medium? Yeah. Wow, great question. Um, yeah, man, I, I feel... As, as this hell, let's, let's let him go. This is, you know... That is beautiful. Um, I feel like with those individuals, while some of it, you know, there's no malice intent, um, I think that's just societal norms that they have gotten into or subscribed to in a way that is like putting it onto you like mm. you know society says you got to do it this way or blah, blah blah or you know or do more we even like in this in this industry where you know you have famous people that's like Yo, you sleep when you die hustle 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 right and like not having any kind of room for like rest what really matters like it's almost impossible you, you'll kill yourself literally because here's the thing the body while it is so intricate and, and we don't give it enough credit but it still has limitations in how long it can go. 
Mm. You know, especially if you're not fueling it properly. So what people do is find enhancements where most of the times, in some cases, it's drugs that we don't really need. But because the mentality is hustle, 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 it's like, well, what can I get the maximum out of my day? Because just your body alone is not going to allow you to do that because it's going to say, hey, now, now it's time for me to rest. Mm. I've been up with you since five more in the morning. We've done. Now I need to rest here. So then we'd say, no, take this thing to now give us 10 more hours or whatever. And when you keep doing that and doing that, then you're going to crash. But again, to answer your question, like some people just have that mentality of like where they project their fears onto you. And I get it both ways. I remember I saw um, this, this guy I know who's, who's doing amazing things in his, in his space of creativity. And uh, we both kind of started out in New York around the same time. And um, I saw him in, in L.A. and it was like during one of the like award seasons where he like, you know, he works for different clients and he particularly he's a stylist. And uh, I was coming in the store. He was coming out. I could tell he was rushing his work. And so I was like, yo, man, good to see you. And he's like, yo, bro, what's up, man? He's like, yo, you, you still doing art? And I was like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, man, I'm working. He's mm. like, yo, man, I want to see more. And he like walked off. And then in my mind, I was like, I know he doesn't mean any harm, but this industry has created this like, I want to see more. Never, yo, how's your heart? How are you mm, feeling? Mm -hmm. Where are you at mentally? Just, I want to see more because that's basically currency to people. The mm. more I see you doing, yeah. then you must be well, then you're living and you're doing it's like, that's the only thing that matters. Where sometimes people will come up to you before they say, yo, what's up, man? They're like, what you working on? That's like a greeting, like, what's your next thing? Especially with someone like myself who had a career where there's been so many like defining moments and highlights where people think that if those things aren't happening back to back to back to back to like it was, then possibly you're not doing things right or, you know, yeah, not you taking, off. you fell off or not taking consideration that have you even said once, yo, how has all that affected you? No one thinks that everyone thinks while it is positive, but no one understands the negative side of success. And it, it actually is. Now, I'm not saying that enough to where you harp on it, but it comes with certain things that if you're not mentally prepared for it, no, no one teaches you how to say literally one day you can control how many people know your name because it's probably going to be limited to your family, your neighborhood, and your school. Those amount of people that you know is going to know you. But one day you're going to do something and now thousands right. of people are going to know you. No one so prepares now, you for that. Now let's stop right there yep, and yep. go into... <laughs> Rita, yeah, <laughs> Jay Z, yeah, yeah, Beyonce. That I'm. We could just stop there, <laughs> um, but literally one day. Mm -hmm. Is it one day or a series of events that's happened? Of course, there was a series of events that happened on the inside to even get me in front or in a position to do these things. I can't mm -hmm. speak for everybody, but for me, because you know, you might know a really like shitty person. Are we allowed to like say, you know, you do your own thing. Some you, of us might know it. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to do this, but we're doing this. <laughs> um, you might know or feel that a person is really shitty or a bad person and mm -hmm. amazing, they're a millionaire, you know, but that's not to say that only great things happen to great people, right? So for me, I said to say that the inner work that I had to do to even put myself in positions for people to even say there's a genuine spirit or nature about this young man and I'm going to accept what he has or because at the end of the day these individuals who you name and the other ones none of them knew me before the encounter mm -hmm. so it was like I had to work on presence like how do you build mm -hmm. presence and wow. to me the simple key was the more I love myself or learn to love myself people will then see that and want some of that love not that they want my love, but it's almost like how we gravitate to something that looks great, refreshing. Uh, if you mm. see a, a pond with beautiful water, you might stare, you know, because it's beautiful in spirit and in nature. So it was like, with that mentality, I was like, I've, I've gone through a lot up until this point, and life is probably going to give me more things. So it's like, let me also work on how I feel on the inside. So when I have something to present, it's coming from a genuine place. It's not like I'm just trying to make a dollar or whatever. It is these empty spaces, you know what I mean? So there were a lot of events that happened more so personally before I was able to put myself, but also just having that, like, take that and then add the Brooklyn mentality to New York. Which person you met first? It started with Jay. Okay. Um, and how that happened was um, 
basically, I was able to identify Beyonce Stylus on Twitter and notice that. I'm like, oh, he knows someone that I know. Mm -hmm. And then that person that he knew was having a party and it was hosted by Beyonce Stylus. And I, at the time, going through this whole therapy of like art, I was painting on the brims of hats just for therapy. So I was like, I need, actually I had ran out of things to paint on. So I was like, let me paint on my hat, like the brim. Mm. And when I stepped back from it, I was like, I had this piece and I'm like, yo, Jay would love this. I had a connection where I thought I could, but I didn't want to utilize that because I felt like somehow that individual would probably been like, I made you or I helped you in a way, mm -hmm. just wanted ownership. Mm -hmm. so I was like, and I wanted to also feel like Basically, I had everything to do with these connecting dots. You right, know what right, I mean? right, right, right. It was owed to me, and I did the work. So um, I went to that event, and it was like a private event. And even that, I'm literally walking. I see a guard, and I'm like, in my mind, thinking, don't stop walking. Act like you belong in here. So one, I just, the walk that I had in the confidence, I'm walking up to the red rope or whatever, thinking that, you know, they're going to be like, you know, who are you? What's your name? Mm -hmm. I guess he could feel the energy, my man. Just reached down to the rope, pulled it back. Ooh. In my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, like, I'm in here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it just yeah, happened. Yeah. Like, there was no questions. It was, like, all about just, like, believing. Not only just believing, but I belong in here. What is the difference between, I know this is a private event, but, like, I belong in here. This is an event of artists and like-minded. Like, I belong in here, right? So started to see myself. And I was also, at the time, reading a book, not to jump all over the place. No, I'm following. A, I'm following. I was reading a book called The Game of Life and How to Play It, which was also, like, you know, almost like a Bible for me because, um, and it actually, you know, touched upon like things of like um, spirituality and, you know, different callings and just like how your words is your wand and, and things of that nature. So it helped me out tremendously. So to even build that courage, like I'm walking in here and I believe, I see myself in here and it's gonna happen. So that, that happened like on my way to this rope, mm. you know what I mean? Cause I actually, in my mind, I thought that I would probably like linger around outside and then maybe know somebody <laughs> do, and do the sneak whole, in. Yo, yeah, yo, yeah. you know, do the whole like, yo, but it's me, it's yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> no, but when he saw me, he was kind of, I think he felt like, oh yeah, dude belongs in here. And like, mm. I went in. So anyway, I introduced myself to the stylist and I said, hey, I'm working on this thing. And I think, cause he had his own, his own unique style. I'm like, I think you would love it. So I showed it to him. He's like, oh, that's really cool. He was like, um, send me a DM. I'll give you the address where to send it to. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, I'm giving this guy a gift. I'm almost certain that he's gonna probably wear it around him. I'm hoping, I mm -hmm. think. Right, right. Lo and behold, two weeks later, he, uh, well, he sent me the information, I sent it to him. Two weeks after that, he's like, he sends me a DM. He's like, hey, yeah, can I call you for a sec? And I'm like, yeah. He calls me, he's like, yeah, I um, got a little situation. He's like, um, remember that hat you gave me? And I'm like, yeah, is everything okay? He's like, someone stole it. So my mom, like, I know what goes into like creating it, like, I'm not about to, it was a gift. Like in my head, I'm thinking, I'm not making you a new one if you were careless with it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh man, that's like, I'm crazy. You know, thinking like, where are we going? <laughs> where are we He's going like, with this? But the person who stole it said, the only way I can get mine back is if you make them one. And I'm like, what? He's like, but I think you wouldn't be, you wouldn't mind the person is Jay-Z. Dog, the thing about that that wasn't even in that was that, remember I told you I made a piece and I stepped back and said, Jay would love this. I still had that piece. Mm -hmm. The hat that I gave the individual wasn't the, the wasn't piece. that one. So when he said that, I'm looking on the phone, I'm looking at this particular piece, and I'm like, this is crazy. But the book that I'm reading said, literally, if you believe it, you can achieve it. I didn't even know that was like a thing. Like, all you really got to do is really focus in and put your mind on something. That's how powerful we are. And I was just like, this is, it almost felt like unreal. He's like, you think you can make that happen? So I'm like, sure. So I'm able to drop it off, dropped it off. So I started telling my friends, like, yo, this might happen. I don't know. So I was like, well, you got to start, you know, build a website in case it happens, whatever. I'm like, you're right, you're right. So I was just making some for my, like, neighborhood friends. And if they knew somebody wanted one, just, you know, making hats or whatever. Keep it. I had left my job at the time as well. So I'm in my basement. Just, you know, I lived in a basement apartment just making hats. And lo and behold, one morning, it was literally like six, going on seven, because I was up just making hats and doing a website. It was seven in the morning. I was like, I'm going to bed. You know, I was young, stay up mm. till the wee hours. Right. And as I'm about to close my eyes, Instagram had like maybe been like two months in. It was or I can't remember how long, but it was a newer thing. It wasn't where it was. I mean, mind you, this is back in like 2016, 15, 15, 16, something like that. Yeah. So anyway, 
uh, they a video comes, an image comes out and is Jay-Z hugging Rihanna at Rihanna's album release party, which the photo in itself, not that it was controversy, but it made headlines because there was rumors that they were feuding over like some contractual things. Mm. So that hug was like them saying, we good, but he was wearing the hat. So there's mm. pictures being floating around and all the publications, cause like the kind of like, not the first time, but in a long time they're seeing him out. So you know how they do what they're wearing. Mm. He's wearing this, he's wearing that. Mm. And people kept saying, does anybody know what hat he's wearing? So my friends are starting like, this is Ron's hat, this is Ron's hat. So once people get that information, then you have like Instagrams, like the source, and different, wow. you know, different people like hat, Bible, wow. blah, blah. But luckily I was up, up wow. all that time making a website. I'm starting to get orders cause people are finding my page. By the end of the day, slammed. Literally like maybe over 200 orders. Like, God. Just people going like, oh, I want this hat. You went from hat. block to 200. It's like that, right? Online. Online. So I rode that wave for like three weeks. I'm not this time. People are reaching out. Who are you? I'm doing little mm. interviews, stories, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, artist, whatever, self-taught, I guess, you know. So from the rope. So I just got to paint, <laughs> paint this picture for you. <laughs> you talking about a guy on the other side of the red rope. You get <laughs> what I'm trying to say? All the way up into interviews now. I never looked at it that way, yeah. On the other side of the red rope. That could be like a movie or a book. <laughs> Yo, I'm just visual. I'm just seeing the trajectory like of just thoughts, you know? It's literally thoughts is happening. Yeah. And I don't know how you, what is what is specific in the book that made you, that clicked for you? Cause you know a lot of people can read, mm -hmm. you know, front page to last page yeah. and, don't, and don't really know. Comprehend, right. You know, what is what is it that really you said i know what this means i know what it means to be in my body mind spirit and to believe that i have it mm -hmm. it was a power of manifestation i didn't but know, what does that mean though like what is that like, like what what's what's the work that you do on yourself for manifesting you know um living in your truth and being honest it's like on the inside like accepting the things that you know, you've experienced and who you are and knowing that, you know, there's just certain things that it's your birthright, it's owed to you. Like happiness, peace, that's your birthright. Go mm -hmm. get it. Literally is within reach. So it was like to get to that place, I think like the more you live in that stillness of that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you just appreciate it more. And that's what the book was like basically laying down for me. So it's like, there was no separation between me and these individuals. And that's before when you say, you know, from the other side of rope, it was like almost like a rebirth. And not that the other side of rope had, now that I'm on this other side, I'm seeing these individuals made me who I am. It wasn't that. It was just the confidence and believing that, mm -hmm. you know, who I am, regardless if I'm on this side or that side, is just as powerful. It's just that now I want to show these individuals who are on the other side of rope, you know, who I am in a sense, because. Unfortunately, those people who are on the other side of the road will never look. Mm -hmm. so sometimes you got to make your way in. And Did you get look. any like, oh, he he's this now or he's no, that? Or no, most you people. You got a lot of support. Most people who know me was it's not, not not a lot of change. Um, the change as far as the emotional change came much later because, like I said, there's a there's just an interesting side to success based on what I've gone through that in some ways has like. I don't say hindered, but like, I guess you could say hindered me in, in some aspects and you know, we'll really? touch upon it. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, so losing parents, which are like, you know, the most devastating thing. And then as you get older, I, you know, I lost, I literally have lost, my mom was the first. And after that, I've lost every parent that I have, grandparent, mm -hmm. mom, dad, right, right. Um, in that span. So since 2003, throughout the years up until, uh, this past year, which I lost my grandma, she's my last living mm -hmm. parent. So I've experienced that. So with success, what it does, what it has done for me, and the, one of the biggest works that I'm still working on is acquiring a success through any means, right? And then when there's a moment where you're like, well, I'm gonna go celebrate this with, and they're not here. Mm. There's a like mm. depleting, you know, feeling about that it literally takes the win out of you where i had to ask myself like am i going crazy because i would get so lost in the, like i'll literally be on a phone call receiving great news or that i got the the, you know, the gig or whatever and while i'm in these meetings i'm like telling myself like when i get off this phone there's a feeling like i'm gonna call my mom like we had that bond and this you know i'm 37 i was 19 when it happened 
and you just there's a small part it's not in the front you know frontal lobe is just like somewhere in there where mm -hmm. you're like I have something to do when I get off because I'm excited to share and these are the people I'm going to share with so you hang up the phone you're happy like, oh, you think about like, oh, what I was going to do and then when it hits you like oh you said you can call your mother and you're like what you know mm -hmm. there is none of that so there have been times in my life where I've shied away from success because I didn't know how hard it would be to acquire that and turn around and nobody's there and, nobody's there and what that would do. It's actually a fear and I don't really deal with fear. I don't really, but that's one of my, that's, where, that's really, wow. where it almost gets dark because I'm like, again, I know that I won't physically harm myself, but I like question what if I only know that because that thing hasn't happened yet? It's so Yo, weird. Mental, just just you know? for you even saying that gave me a revelation, like in my life, you know, because they brought that that brought a lot of clarity. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie, because when I was missing my daughter for the first three years of her life, mm -hmm. um, and then I got and then I got full custody for the next three. I go, like. I didn't want to reach a certain point because I didn't have that thing, that person, that that somebody to be like, we did this, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, will, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go to the events. Yeah. And I'm just realizing why I wouldn't do that, you know, or why, like even even um, me meeting Jay, it was a it was a similar I got a lot of situations <laughs> on being on the other side of the rope and then not getting on the yeah, other yeah, determination. You know. <laughs> but this particular time we was at the Rose Bowl and um I like I knew I wanted to say something, but and I knew it this was a person that I always wanted to meet, you know, and I met a lot of people. But I couldn't get myself to to like speak you know I only can enjoy moments mm. you get what I'm trying to say mm. I could never get myself to ask what I wanted I always just knew how to just get there and just sit and just and just watch you know and just be a fly on the wall but that is a problem <laughs> you know and I didn't understand that problem until now yeah. you know that's <laughs> crazy and he spoke to me first that's wow. the crazy part, you yeah, know? Yeah. That's the only person in this whole industry. Well, actually, Will just did that the other day, actually. Mm, mm. Him and Will is the only two people that literally see me and say, oh, what up? And not know who I am or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, you need a little self-confidence, my brother. Mm -hmm. You need to walk around like you got a, like a yeah. you know, crown on your head. So doing the work on the inside and then getting out and doing something is a way better play. <laughs> you did the hats, mm -hmm. and now you're doing full. Yeah, because it was a transgression. Things. So like, um, from the hats and like clothing, because you know it started with that. And then it was just like, I per my goal was like I wanted to add mobility to art. Like a lot of times, if I say like, or some artists would be, will have a show, you got to come to it. Which nothing's wrong with that, but just me and the way my mind works is like. How do you like break that formula or change? Not even say break, but like add a mm -hmm. different dynamic. Not yeah. that I was the first one to do it, but for me, I was like, I want to add mobility. I want to paint on things that move, and which is people, objects, things that where my now my art show can literally be a person who, let's say, you wake up one morning and put on something that I hand painted, and you travel from here to Chicago. Now everyone who comes in contact with you, that's like my walking right, art right, show. Right, right. You know what I mean? Walking So it was like for me, also thinking like. Well, who are people that are going to be in the people's eye the most? And it was like, okay, these are people who are celebrated the most through the people. So I might like, you know, while there were a tons of like everyday people who supported and I created things for, but like the marketing of it or whatever came from like these celebrities or celebrated people mm -hmm. who had like large followings in a sense of their fan base um, and just doing a lot of custom things for them kind of just brought in the work, which is when I uh, mentioned to you that I had a clothing line called Base by Round Bass and was in a market from um, 20, like a 16 or 15, if I, the, the, I'm not, I don't know numbers, but it was like three or four years in the market. Did pretty well over like mm -hmm. six or 700 stores around, you know, we, um, throughout the world. Um, and then that opened me up to things. I did a uh, collaboration with Forever 21, um, Chevrolet, like it was, you know, I was coming into my own as an artist with all these brand deals or whatever. Um, yeah, and that's been basically been the, the journey. But like I said, even with some of those things, 
some moments that I would see or like everything that I named was a product of me saying, yeah, Yo, you got to do this. You got to do this. But there were times where I'm like, I'm not yeah, doing this yeah, because yeah, it's going to yeah. be too much. Like, there's even been times where like friends would be like, I think if you come here, so-and-so, and I'm like, yeah, in my head, I'm, I'm not going to tell them this, but I'll be like, oh yeah, I got something to do. Because just like the simple fact that like, mm. what if I go do this? And this is yeah. like the thing, like this is the thing where I do it. And I'm so like heartbroken because it really, for me, like, it's one of my biggest things. Like, man, I know that they're proud of me. Don't get me wrong, because I just, from having them for the time that I did, and just, like, how they, what, what, what fuels that even more, when I would get, like, 100 on the test or be the top of my class, the way they would go out for their own boy. So just to imagine, like, right. what they would do. Right. And what my they mom would do was if, also, right. she had a way. I would hear her, which I knew it wasn't just to do in front of me. Like, her sisters would call, my aunts would attest to this. And just a ca casual conversation, I would hear her on the phone. And she's like, oh, what you doing? And then she'll ask about my cousin, like, which is my aunt's kid. Like, what they doing? And she'll, they'll say, she's like, well, I bet they're not getting hundreds like my boy. Like, she mm -hmm. would jokingly mm -hmm. throw things out. Or like, if we go over there, and she'll be like, um, y'all say hi to the, the top student in this class. Or like, this kid, like, she was just loved to, like, show me out in that way. So as a kid, it's almost so you like, know you, what that your, feels like. you know what it feels like. I can only yeah. imagine now that her boy is doing these things. But I also think would I have been doing this if they still? So that's another thing. I don't, honestly, mm. don't think so. I don't think that because, you think again, it'd be more com You think it'd be more home? I don't think it would be comfort. I just think that I'll have a different life trajectory because this literally stemmed from the pain of losing them. You know what I mean? I was literally probably. Do you know how many other, do you know how many other people you helping right now though? I do, which, which is why I'm not like upset with the outcome of that like I accepted that they're gone like so it's not where like because mm -hmm. I understand they live their life what their purpose is so the fact that they instilled this in me and then I get to do this and people inspire is like these are the good things and vibration that we're supposed to do mm -hmm. like recycling good energy um so I get that which is why I'm not like shit I want them here or whatever whatever mm -hmm. but again just where my heart is at sometimes I forget so how do you stay present with all that you got going on meditation a lot of alone time, but not lonely. So it's the difference between alone and being lonely. I choose to go on trips alone. I choose to be by myself, be alone, but I'm not lonely based off the love and energy that I know my family, my friends, supporters mm. they have. I'll never be lonely, but I choose to be alone. And that's yeah. kind of how, because the more I get to know myself and be with myself, like even the love I have for myself now, nobody can compare. Like, so if someone, if I was like with in a relationship and a young lady were to be like, you know, I love you more. You can never say you love me more than I love myself because the love that I have for me that I've built, you know, has done a great things for me, mm. you know, which allows me to sit here in front of you and be able to have a level head to talk to you. Yeah, because you know? I can, I, you know, this is just super crazy because, you know, I, I, I don't know what I would do, you know, if I lost parents, you know, um, I don't know what I would do. I mean, I'm the only child. You don't. We, no, I have older brother. Okay. Eight, eight years. I'm the only child. You said eight. Eight years older than me. Oh, I'm the only child. So, for me, alone is like, mm -hmm. you know, it's by default. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but for you, it's like you do your art. A lot of people see it, and they like it. Mm -hmm. Some you do, even some don't. <laughs> I mean. For me, I don't even have to talk to you. I'm just gonna buy the postcard. You know, I'm just I, like you got people like that that you don't even that don't that don't even have to question what you're doing, but support. Yeah. You know, and it's just so interesting how God or life, you know, it takes something away and give you so much mm -hmm. on the other side of it. Yeah. But you still feel like. This, I want this this one piece right here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. how do you how do you reconstruct your mind to think that your life is using you mm -hmm. in a way in a way that you probably would never get to understand, yeah. but you're still moving through it. So think, and I'm glad you said restructure because it is literally restructuring your thought process because even as Rightfully so, you mentioned with life taken away. But I learned that life only gives, mm. right? So even with the loss or the experiences that I had, that wasn't life's doing. They didn't take that away. 
everything has its purpose. I'm glad you said that. You know, everything has its purpose and life only gives. So if you look at it that way, I oftentimes, more than I am in like a state of grief, I'm asking myself, in this loss, what did life give me? You know, wow. so it's like taking that look in the mirror and saying, you know, one, you're still here, so life gave you strength through this. It's tough, but you got your hair. You know, what in the experiences with these individuals are you able to take away? What did they instill in you? So the fact that you can do that, you have a mind, your brain, life's giving you that, these experiences, you know, so you're fortunate enough. So I can't, I, I guess, is the, like to answer your question, is a restructuring of the thought pattern that life can only give because life is a mm. nourishing thing you put so into when you it. you only think that is you can't even, you, you don't even invite anything else. You're just like, yeah. you know. Things are going to happen. There's purpose that is going to be, but I don't know if it's a takeaway. I don't think, mm. I think it's, it can only be additive um, in a sense. Um, but I think, yeah, it's just, it's just a reprogramming and a restructuring because, you know, even us as like, you know, African-Americans and how we were taught to believe certain things or just even the programming mm. we have a lot of unlearning to do man just like societal norms and that a lot of it wasn't designed for us and when it was designed for us it wasn't designed to benefit us mm. like right. literally the fact that we are sitting here and we're not arguing and there's a, like a genuine love for one another and respect we're actually going against what they want for they, they want us to like yo I don't want to deal with you or not talk to you or mm. not like allow you to have an opinion and to be different from mine and be okay with that. Like they want friction. You yeah. know what I mean? So the fact that we have unlearned that, yo, this man has done me no harm or whatever, you know, this is my brother. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, we, we come from the, the same, you know, inheritance and, and motherland. Like why would I be against this man? You know what I mean? When you start to rethink that is like, let's go against the grain. So when you apply that to other areas of life, you realize that a lot of things that we taught that were wrong, man. A lot of it. Like, so now, Reconstruction mm -hmm. of your thought process, entrepreneurship. Yeah. How? Like, how do you? How do you? You get? You got two hundred <laughs> orders. <laughs> you know, you got. You got the. How do you? Yeah. No, that's and that's key. That comes at you fast. Um, and I think maybe that's where. Well, me, let me say this for the record, because I know some people are just gonna be listening. And they can't see, because uh -huh. I be making different moves and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but you go from again. Red rope, <laughs> other side, two hundred orders. Um, now I've I've built this infrastructure where people know me and they know where to go to get it. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship. How did you cultivate mm -hmm. a business mindset? Uh, uh, like, did you get an accountant? Mm -hmm. Did you mm -hmm. did you file your taxes? Mm -hmm. Did you? <laughs> so definitely trial and error and actual infield experience. Now, I'm not saying that works for everybody. So there are moments where I feel like the education, the academic education, as far as like what you might learn, would have probably played a role. Mm -hmm. Like if you took some business classes or whatever, there's certain things you just, you know, you learn. So that's why I'm not against that. But like for me, it was a lot of trauma error where it was like, the IRS is telling me I owe money. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to pay this? So mm -hmm. it was like, for me, that was my, it wasn't like I went in knowing this is how you set it up. So it's almost like even with the orders, it was like, how am I physically gonna do all of this? And it was like, you killing yourself literally because you're up, you know, like a night owl, breaking day, fulfilling these orders, and you're like, you probably should have put a cap on a cap on it mm. and did a release where, but you you know, you trial yeah, and error, yeah. you don't really know. So for me, it was a lot of that. Even up to this day, I'm I'm constantly learning, you know, new ways, especially as, you know, the business structure is growing, you know, virtually and you know, the tech being more tech savvy and how to like reach those now with like NFTs and all these things and mm -hmm. cryptocurrency. So it's like, I'm constantly learning and, you know, applying what I know and I don't know it all. And I lean on to people who have had the success in that area. And I'm like, you know, hey, what's this mean and blah, blah, blah. And if I could share something, I will. But I think it's a, a, a trial and error for me, at least, um, which has helped me. So yeah, hired an accountant um, to help me with, with certain areas and how to manage money I have you know, a, a financial advisor in a sense that he's also a mentor, but I can lean on him and say, hey, mm. what's best to do, blah, blah, blah. And he's giving me, you know, tips and things where I should do where, you know, that's not just given to you. So, yeah, but I think I had to go through certain things. Yeah, so you're not to, scared to ask the question. A lot of people scared, don't yeah. ask questions. I, but I wasn't always that way. Of course, you don't want to bother people yeah. and you think you kind so of got it. So what switched for you? 
was it the success like oh i'm dealing with this i need i need help I need yeah help. like when you start to fall on your ass it's like okay I, you reaching up and you're like i need someone to help me you know what i mean mm. be honest but did you look to your left and and your right and go who is here to help me out with this and then you you seen there was nobody and then you went and found somebody or i guess it was a uh, case by case there were definitely people to my left and right as far as friends and family that helped me with just life situations mm. when it comes to success um, there were a few friends, um, especially like my one friend that I went, uh, went to high school with, she is an accountant. So I was able to look to her for some questions mm -hmm. and she was able to do what she could do outside of her own practice yeah. or whatever. I have friends that do taxes that in the beginning was able to help me until I, you know, found someone. But so, I, yeah, I say that because you know how you know how a lot of people be like, uh, you working, you working too up. Mm, you know, across. you yeah. know, work across, mm -hmm. you know, is it, do you go by that or is it just like case by case situation? I think, it, yeah, I mean, I think you also know, like people's strength, like for example, you getting to know me, you might not know another artist. So if someone says, hey, I need an artist, I might be the first person you think about. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, because someone said, hey, I need an artist. But if someone says- That's because you did the work on yourself. <laughs> this is true. But I mean, you, you kind of think of in your circle, who will be shine the best? Or you might want to give someone a chance, but usually that's how it works. So if it's something like, hey, I need a, a, a neurosurgeon, mm. I'm not going to tap have my you boy in. When you have know? you often gave somebody a chance and did not know their heart? You didn't know, like like for, for me and you, we had a somewhat, you know, conversations and, and I kind of got the sense of genuine spirit of gen, mm -hmm. like you know, of I can I can really have a convo and I can really sit and I, maybe I can learn something, maybe you can learn something from me, maybe it's, or we could just have fun and kick it. Mm -hmm. Like, do you ever just go off the limb and just work with you know anybody? Uh, um, there were cases uh, back when like um, the structure of like the Colden deal I had, where there were like some interns where, you know, you can kind of tell they're just looking get their feet wet. So I definitely have done that but as I'm older I haven't really one had the need the needs that I guess basically needed were met by individuals who I felt could mm -hmm. handle that it wasn't I didn't have the liberty to take a chance you know some of these like, were serious moments where yeah. I didn't have the liberty to be like well I'm gonna give you a tryout like it was like I need the, the most expert person that I can you know, reach out to that can help me with this because it's in a dire yeah. situation because maybe I waited too long. But maybe if it was like, all right, I got eight months, then maybe. But it was like, no, I need to respond to this right away. Who I can figure out that's going to help me out and, you know, kind of. Last question. Mm -hmm. What does no public opinion mean to you? No public opinion? No public opinion. Mean to me? When you hear that, what does that mean? No public opinion mean to me. Wow. Um, that's interesting because uh, I believe no matter what, opinions should be warranted. Now, what you do with that opinion or how you present that opinion is one way, but I would never want to take away someone's opinion on anything because I wouldn't want, you know, someone to do that to me. So I guess the question is, with that no public opinion, no public shared opinion? Because I think that's where the issue is for me. So like, for example, let's take Instagram. Everything that is said there, I believe don't have to be. Like if say you posted something, I ain't like the way your shirt look. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's my right to be like, that shirt is ugly. You can keep that. That's, you, you have, I'm not taking away from your opinion as what you do with that opinion. Mm -hmm. So you can have that. You have a mind, utilize it. I encourage you to think. But now what you do with that opinion, how it might affect someone else, that's where I feel like we have, we, we have lost that. You just mm. tell anybody your opinion on things, how you feel, when you want, this is my opinion, so what? It's like, where are we at with humanity? Have we all lost our minds? Like, which I think, yeah, some of that is some yes, of that, we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you coming from a place where we just give, 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 give. So basically, no public opinion. How I'm interpreting mm. it is, is really, how are you giving with your opinion? Right. What are you doing with that opinion? You How you that? go about expressing that opinion? Well, I appreciate yeah. you, man, for tapping in with me. Likewise. This brother. has been great. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah.